last video, we sank the world's cheapest DIY electric boat. In this video, we're gonna make sure these kayaks are waterproof. Brought my boat in for inspection. Absolutely no water intrusion. Hey everybody, AJ here, and welcome back to the Eagle Ray channel where we do all things DIY electric boats. Marine motors, batteries, solar panels, you name it. If it's got volts and it's on a boat, you're in the right place. In the last episode, we sank the boat. There's no way to sugarcoat it. This boat is not seaworthy yet. And I can't call this project a success until the darn thing can be on the water all day long. But also, if it does sink, I need to be able to disassemble it quickly. Those kayaks are bolted to the deck in several places and it takes way too long to disconnect them. So in this episode, we're gonna solve both of those problems. Number one, we're gonna make sure that these kayaks are waterproof. And number two, we're gonna replace those regular bolts with these quick release brackets. These are the same kind of thing that you'd have on a bicycle seat. But before we get into today's build, I want you all to know how hard it is to register a brand new boat because that was an adventure in and of itself. I just got out of the game and fish department. I brought my boat in for inspection because I talked to them yesterday over the phone. They have a registration process online, but you can't use it for a homemade boat. So I talked to them over the phone. They told me you just need to bring it in for an inspection. We need to get a quick look at it and everything will go like clockwork. Um, they did not specify that I need a lot of documentation to go with it. So I just drove 100 miles from my house, found out that I need to bring the receipt for the purchase of each kayak. I need a bill of sale for each kayak if those are different documents than the receipt. And I need a manufacturer's certificate of origin for each kayak. And then they're going to issue me a registration fee for each kayak, even though they're one boat. I strapped them together and bolted them in. They're still gonna charge me two different registration fees. And I even asked them, what if it had just been two plastic pontoons? Then they wouldn't have VIN numbers at all. So you can register it as one boat, but because there are VIN numbers on each, you're not going to. And they said, correct. That's, that's exactly the story. Not using them as kayaks, so the VIN numbers are irrelevant, but they don't see it that way. Um, and any chance that the government has to charge you more money, they're definitely going to. All right, guys, I am leaving the Game and Fish Department for the second time today with two brand new registration cards for one boat. Ask me how that makes sense. I couldn't tell you, but it is what it is. This is the real problem right here. What I would do differently, to, it's an easy fix, actually. I would just not attach the, the kayaks. So if you brought the deck and just the PVC pipes, you can register that as a boat. They have a raft classification on their website even. So you could just call this a raft and get one registration number for that. And then you wouldn't have to register these. And when you bring this home, then you could just attach them after the fact. Is the game warden really gonna ask you for three registration cards for one boat? And if they did, then you could just play dumb and say, I didn't know I need three registration cards for one boat. I drove 200 extra miles today. So it actually cost me 50 extra bucks in gas 20 extra bucks for an extra one of these pieces of paper as you can imagine i'm a little irritated but i don't want to send too much hate to the game and fish department you know they're just trying to do their job it's just the the red tape man i can't stand it sometimes all right we're back with registration stickers on both kayaks and so now it's time to waterproof these bad boys so without further ado let's do stuff Let's see if we take on less this time. I'm about to go to town on this transom with these Loctite liquid nails, premium construction adhesive. Obviously, this stuff is not built for that purpose, 
But you know what? I used the JB Weld, literally labeled water weld. As it is designed for this purpose, and that didn't waterproof the transom. I put JB Weld on all of these bolt holes, both the outside and the inside. So I imagine that maybe those are waterproof, but I'm not sure about the, the plastic weld seals I did recently here or here. But these bolt holes are still here from the factory. And I don't know if those are perfectly waterproof. And this section of the kayak is likely to be submerged. So what I'm gonna do is lather the whole thing up with liquid nails everywhere I see there might be potential for a hole, including the VIN number. Now the Department of Game and Fish told me that it is illegal to remove the VIN number. Don't look now, Game and Fish Department. I'm doing something illegal. Uh-oh, oh, look at that, I fixed it. And hopefully that is waterproof. We're gonna find out tomorrow. The lake won round one, but we are here for round two. I think I've successfully waterproofed the transom on both of these and we're about to find out for sure. Definitely didn't see any drops. Look at that, that is beautiful. Absolutely no water intrusion. Wow. So I think these quick release brackets are gonna work fine. They're gonna go like that. But the problem with that is this pin is going to lock here through here to hold the wheel in the up position. I don't know why they put this hole here and this hole here right next to each other. So I just drilled this hole so that I can put the pins in here instead. It takes forever to drill through this with a hand drill. I took minutes to get through just that part. Now I gotta get through this part, I gotta get through the other side on both, and then I gotta do the entire other wheel, same thing. Rather than spending hours drilling with a hand drill anymore, I'm gonna get myself a drill press. I know I've recently said that no one should ever buy anything from Harbor Freight, but you know what? I, I can't help myself. They have this way of speaking to my inner cheapskate. It's a drill press. It's such a simple piece of machinery. It feels like there must be no way to screw it up. Apparently I haven't learned my lesson yet, guys. This is the tray that you're supposed to set something on that you want to drill into. It won't tighten. This, by the way, is near impossible to tighten by hand. I'm gonna see if I can crank it. See, I, unless I put two hands on it. That's, that's everything I got just to turn it that far and it barely moves. I went to Home Depot instead and I bought a Ryobi 10 inch drill press. This is my brand new Ryobi drill press. I am in instant love with it. We're gonna flip it on real quick, see what it sounds like. Let's check this out. Look at that, laser guided sights. This piece, if not secured, could turn into a helicopter very quickly from this machine. It's very dangerous, that's why I've geared up. I think I'm ready to run this for the first time. Let's see what happens. It just went right through. It's so easy. Go into the launch ramp, gonna swim with a lot of fishes. Wait a minute. Well, we're not sinking yet, and I've been out here for about an hour so far, so I think we can call the waterproofing a tentative success but I need to do a lot of tests using this boat for videos in the near future, so we're gonna see if it stands the test of time. But no matter how much time you spend on a project, there is always more to do. For instance, I was really dissatisfied with the rope that we used when we put this boat together. If you recall in a previous video, there's an extra line tied to the bow. That was necessary to keep the noses of each kayak from spreading too far apart as they cut through the water. And even with all that rope as tight as it can be, the whole platform feels pretty flimsy. So to be honest, I'm not really comfortable doing multi-hour tests on this boat every day with only rope holding it together. And that's why starting next week, we're gonna be replacing the rope with more aluminum. 
I'm gonna figure out how to build a forward bracket system that will make the bow just as sturdy as the transom. So that's it for this video, guys. Like and subscribe and join us on Sunday at 2 p.m. where I'm gonna be giving away a Milwaukee angle grinder as soon as we reach 1,000 subscribers. Rules are in the description below. And as always, don't forget, as you go about your daily life, set aside some time to get out on the water and enjoy yourself. Until then, thanks for watching, boat safe, and take care.